Hello and welcome to Prosperous for Nirvana's series, Healthy Body, Healthy Mind. And today I'm glad to be joined by a special guest, Arthur, Arthur who has worked with me for a few months and has done a couple of uh, collaborations with me. Uh, I will introduce that Arthur momentarily. Just to welcome you all along, I hope this will be a, a relaxed few minutes we spend about uh, talking about anxiety and how we may handle it in the workplace. Um, can I ask people, as we go through this, to think about the effect that anxiety is having in their life? Do you know the cost of that anxiety, whether it's a physical cost, an emotional cost, a cost to relationships? Is it holding you back in your career? What's the cost that that anxiety is having for you? And if you don't do something about it, what will be the cost in the future? We all have it in our power to do to resolve our anxiety and resolve those problems. And ask yourself the question, what do I need to do? And what will happen if I don't do anything about it? If I do the same thing again and again, will I get different results? Um, hopefully people will be relaxed enough and this will be easy going enough to allow people to contribute. If you would like to make a contribution, please feel free to interrupt. Um, myself and Arthur are easy going. We don't mind being interrupted. In fact, we, pr pr we prefer it. This webinar, webinar is by and large about you, your experience of anxiety and the things that you might be able to do to resolve that. Uh, just a, a brief introduction to myself. My name is William, and I'm the host of today's meet, meeting. Um, some of you may have been on webinars with me before, and some may not. And just a, a brief background to myself. I spent 20 years as a finance director, after which I had enough of that high-pressured, high-powered life and decided I wanted to contribute something more powerful to the world. And I have since become a life coach and public speaker. Um, with that, and without any further ado, I will introduce Arthur. So Arthur, thank you very much for joining me today. And I know this is going to be of great value to the people on this webinar. We might start by you just telling us a little bit about yourself, Arthur, and your background. Uh, hello, William, and thank you for having me. Um, and hello to everyone joining us today. Uh, the first thing I want to say, you've asked really very important questions about uh, the things you can think about today and um, during that old webinar. Few few words about me. So, as William said, uh, I'm an anxiety coach, life coach, and nutritional therapist, um, which all is linked, nutrition, anxiety, well-being, mental health. Um, me, as myself, I've suffered with an anxiety disorder and a panic disorder uh, for 16 years of my life, which, which just brought me to, to, to here, to you today. Um, after 16 years, I started to work on myself, so I was my own patient uh, for three years, looking for answers, um, looking for a lot of things, really, in a spiritual way, in a, a health-wise way, nutritional way going through all the courses, going through all the books, interviews with people. And uh, I've done, I think, around 70 interviews with people who, who were able to overcome anxiety, were able to find a different path, a different way in their life. So uh, that all combined, uh, I've, I've decided I want to help other people. And after two years of helping family, friends, and then, uh, let's say, strangers, uh, who became friends. Uh, I've, I've opened my own business, I've, um, uh, which now it's called uh, the Calm Mind Clinic. And my program is called Anxiety Breaker, where we uh, break for anxiety uh, from different, different directions. So yeah, that's me. Thank you for having me. So, so before we get into how you began to recover from anxiety, you might tell us a little bit about the cost that had for you uh, when at its height, when you suffered mostly from it, what was the impact that had on your life? Um, 
the impact it had in my life morphed because first it was uh, first it was just it was just being worried and uh, and uh, alert most of the time after the first panic after two first panic attacks I had I just I was just aware of things that might happen but when the when the time passed and when the years passed uh, it all changed for me because I had more panic attacks and I was more anxious about going outside, meeting new people. Um, I was too young to have a job back then, but obviously it had an impact on, on, on how I was uh, in, uh, active in school. Um, it, it turned to be a social anxiety later and health anxiety, which prevented me from public speaking and public speaking, speaking in a class really. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I, I would say, I don't like to look negative in the past, but I would say, most of the decisions I've made were limited to condition I had. So I am here and I am happy I am here. I am here and I am really happy with, with what I do and how my life looks like now. Uh, so I am thankful for, for having this order I had. But when people look and when people say to me, oh, you're, you were suffering 16 years, so probably you lost a lot of, a lot of your life, I would rather say, now I would say I gained, but when I was back then, I thought only about losing everything I had. I couldn't go to shop. I couldn't drive a car. I couldn't travel because I was too afraid. I couldn't meet another person, a new person. I couldn't make relationships. So, yeah, that was the impact I had. And obviously, so health one impacts. One of the main impacts then was a, a looping thought process that, kept, that was on a very negative loop. And as you rightly said, you don't like to be negative now. You like to 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 focus on the positive and of course as life coaches we believe you get what you focus on so you oh, yeah. you focus on recovery so how did how did you bring that about um about the recovery how, how, how did you what was the first step you took in, in your recovery uh, i would need to say why i did the first uh step in the first place so i've I think I hit a rock bottom and I thought, I don't want to live like that anymore. Um, and obviously, as, a de as depressive as it sounds, it gave me additional energy because I've realized that if I don't want to live like that, it's only two ways from here. The first one is too depressive to talk about, but the second one was, I just need to change my life. So the, the, the first step I took was research and knowledge. And I was reading, I probably had read 50 plus books in the first year, let's call it the first year of recovery. I, I didn't act too much, but I gained knowledge. And knowledge is really helpful because knowledge brings awareness and gives you perspective. So, so that's the, that was the first step. So would it be fair to say that that first year was about gaining awareness? Yeah, definitely, yes. And like most things, we can't we can't fix those things of which we're not aware. So it sounds you you became aware of the problem you had, and possibly even of what life could be like without without that problem. Oh, definitely yes. And um, as you said when you were introducing yourself and me, um, and asking people to ask themselves a question, um, if you will not do and if you will not take action. If anything will change obviously if you if there is no motion there is no change so without taking any action and helping yourself or or getting someone to help yourself uh, help you with anxiety stress or over stressing or depression uh, it will it will not help you because if you'll sit in the same place over and over again nothing will change yes so the first thing you began to change was First, it was awareness and knowledge. Then I realized after the research and after talking with a lot of people involved in overcoming anxiety or, or, or helping others overcome anxiety, was nutrition. Because nutrition uh, and, and a diet, let's call it a diet and nutrition, is it have a massive impact. It's a, it's a complex topic, but it's have a massive impact how deficiencies of minerals and vitamins can create even the same symptoms as, as depression, even the same symptoms as panic attack and anxiety. 
So that was the first, that was the second first step, let's call it. Um, and I think that brings us to a very important area that I think is quite often overlooked in the heat of anxiety. And that's the, the mind, heart, gut connection, that mm. there is a, a, a physical nerve that joins them, the, the vagus nerve, and that when when we think negatively, when we're in that negative loop, it does have an effect on our gut and on our heart. And similarly, if our if our gut isn't right, that will affect our, our brains too. So it's it's a very important point there, but I think that we we as humans are our our system and if any part of that system gets out of alignment then the other parts can suffer. Yeah, when when you talk to when you talk to the Buddhists or, or, or people who spend years and years on, on on spiritual way, spiritual path, a lot of them talk about balance. And this is what you have just said about you need to have some sort of balance in life. And that balance is not only about let's say family job faith or spirituality it's also about food and having water enough water a day so yeah i'm a big advocate of of, of balanced life so yeah tell, tell, tell me more about that you want to hear more about the balance so uh, <laughs> for you uh, how, how, how do you how uh, tell me about your your personal manifestation of balance and how it improves your anxiety. Um, so I will give you an example. I need to grab something from Rob. Oh. So how I see balance is um, and anxiety works the same way. So if you have anything that you, let's say, let's call it those are emotions and suppressed emotions means you hold them, th those emotions really close to you. So the balance point is here. This is out of balance. And obviously pushing something away is also out of balance. What happens when you don't have enough energy to hold it too close to you or to push it away? That will hit you hard. If you push it away, that will hit you here. If you hold it, that will go even further away. So if you want to hold something too close to you, it's even if it's relationship, job, Whatever, whatever you think about, eventually it will run away from you. And on the other hand, if you suppress things, if you hold things like emotions for a long, long, long time inside of you, they will hit, they, they will hit your heart. So balance for me, it's finding a, the spot in between when you live in the present. Don't dwell on past and don't false falsely predict future because I always say it to people I work with, the people with anxiety, to give him perspective only. If you know the future, I want to know all the lottery numbers for the next for, for the next Friday. Just just to say before we go on, if anybody has any questions along the way, feel free to put them into the chat or to interrupt if if you're if you're confident to come to come on camera. Um, so for balance for you, I know, I know one of the things you, you, uh, have that brings a lot of balance into your life is your children. Oh yeah. Three of them, all three running around. <laughs> I hear them now. If you hear them, sorry, <laughs> but they are somewhere around the house. Uh, yeah. Having the, so balance between work, um, work, emotion in work, emotion in family and life as it as, as a health needs to be somewhere like 30 30 30 33 percent 33 percent 33 percent if you if you spend not even time too much time but too many emotions and you, and you dwell on those emotions that same job in your work that will have a big impact on your health because you stress and that will also take away a little bit of that balance from the family life and we all know it if you if you try to climb the ladder in corporation or if you try to impress your manager line manager boss or if you are a ceo and you just need to hit that project hit that budget and you need to control everyone around you and you spend 12 hours in, in, in workplace or 13 or even if you spend only eight but you come back home and sit on a laptop for another three just to finish up the report 
um, that will have an impact. You know what your partner will say after a month if he or she will still be there. You know how kids will be like, Daddy, just, just, just come play with us. And your health, if you are stressed, you are not healthy. Your immune system goes down. Your, as you said before, uh, your digestive system will not work. Your gut bacteria will deteriorate a lot. It has a huge impact. And the same way it goes with anything else. If you pick any one of those, if, 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 if you will go too much into a spiritual path, you probably will lose yourself in a way. You will lose the job. Maybe people will start saying, like leaving you because he's weird. He's meditating seven hours a day. Something wrong with him. So there is a balance everywhere. So tell me now how you, when you are, you are in the height of your anxiety disorder, you are suffering panic attacks. Mm-hmm. And you began, you became aware of that, and you became to get, you became more knowledgeable, knowledgeable about it. So what mm-hmm. next? What, 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 what? Huge, and I will say it again: huge uh, part of me overcoming minimizing first and then overcoming uh, disorder, anxiety disorder, was visualization and meditation. Uh, I had a goal, and that goal was I want to become, I want to have my life back, I want to feel normal again, and I want to have a family. And that was my goal, that was like um, the, the, the picture I had in my mind. And I visualized it every day before going to bed, after waking up, Um, and meditation. So there is a lot of way you can meditate. But for me, it was gratitude, gratefulness, meditation. Every morning I stood up, I was doing breathing, exercising. I was uh, thanking everything, every word, God, or just, I was thankful for everything. I was grateful. And I was writing down five things. The gratitude and self-compassion were, were important. Yeah, huge, huge, huge thing. And when you suffered from, an, from a panic attack, obviously it's, a, it's an attack. It's a, it sounds like something that's coming from outside of us, although it, it re, in reality it's internal. But what did, what did you do typically to, to manage that panic attack? <laughs> so... In, when, in a peak of my anxiety uh, and panic disorder, I had like five to 10 panic attacks a day. So I didn't really manage it well. But when I started to understand, uh, practice some form of relaxation techniques and calmness, I also used uh, grounding techniques, which were, uh, which were just being present. So spotting, let's say that there is a grounding technique, which is really, really, uh, you can Google it. I don't want to talk long about it because it's a longer topic. It's, it's called grounding technique, five, four, three, two, one. When you spot five things, when you touch three things, when you taste one thing, and it's, uh, it's, it's helpful because it takes you to the present moment. And as we know, anxiety is all about the future and false prediction about the future. And like depression is all about past and dwelling on the past emotions and experiences. So if the, the balance in between, coming back to balance, it's being in a present moment. I'm not saying it's easy. You have a lot of people preaching about it. One of them is Ek- Eckhart Tolle, Tolle, who is, uh, I think, well-known. Um, and he's trying to teach people how to be in a present moment. And I think that's, uh, that's really worth practicing. So grounding techniques was one of them. And the second that worked was cold water. Okay. Or if you have access to freezer with things, just something cold from a freezer on your neck. So again, that's, that's about bringing your focus to the now. Yeah. That if the, if the pain of the now is more, more intense than the pain of the future, then your focus yeah. is on the now. Yeah, and what I will, obviously what I will definitely say if any of you watching have an anxiety disorder or problem of stress, I really recommend making someone from your surroundings, like job, making them aware, at least one person you trust. Um, 
just because sometimes, let's say, if you get a panic attack, you have one person who can calm you down. If you don't have, they will panic with you, which means they will call ambulance, they will create even more stress around you, and you will panic even more. So it's just something that I always recommend, and I never had it almost till the end. In the end, I've said, my, I've said about panic attacks to my uh, line manager, and he was really helpful. But I also know that not a lot of people understand it. So if you have I, someone I, you can trust. I do know from, from my, par my own experience in, in the corporate world and at the, I suppose at the, at the top of my particular department, that a lot of people see their bosses, and I, I hate the word boss, but they see their bosses as being something less than human, and they forget their, their bosses have, have humanity. Um, by and large, anybody who came to me saying they were suffering from with whatever the problem was, whether it be anxiety or, or family issues or personal issues, I never left my humanity outside of the room, and I've never known anybody who does. So a lot of, I think a lot of people build up anxiety about sharing their anxiety with others. But I, I think it's important to remember that those other people are human too. And if they haven't seen it before, they've certainly seen somebody that, that, uh, that, has, that has seen it. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's a very good point. And we need to also remember that people who are in a, let's say, your boss or higher position, they also educate themselves and they know what can happen to their employees and you will find probably maybe you will find some people who doesn't care they don't care about it maybe i don't i never met as you said you never met i never met one but maybe some people have that kind of a boss uh but now we talk more and more and more about in, uh, emotional intelligence more and more about employees well-being and, and the mental health and there is a mental health month for men, for women, for, for people. So I think, I think that the, the leadership, the new leadership uh, culture is a little, like, it, it is better. It's getting better. So if there is someone you can talk with about your, about your struggle, definitely do it. And for uh, for those who, for, for those of us on this call that might be in leadership positions, mm -hmm. I think it's important to to recognize that we have not only do we have a moral duty, but there's a corporate social duty we have to employees. That uh, the day and age where the command and control type of management is is behind us, and we have to bring our humanity. And you know what? Life is life is better for everybody when we all bring our humanity warts and all. Hundred percent. You 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 were a director for years, and being a director, being a leader, you had a lot of people that you 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 probably supervised, uh, and you know micromanaging doesn't work anymore. It, it was it was it's a thing of the past. And, and bullying doesn't work either. <laughs> yeah. No, that can only create problems. So yeah, uh, but yeah, as I've said, you are a director and you've changed your life dramatically when it comes to dropping from a very high position of being a director in a in a in a big company in a corporation. And it, it inspires me that you found a way in a, in a spiritual way. You find a. a, a you help people, you help people coaching them and showing them how to, uh, you, you can tell a little bit more about it, what you show to people, because I'm always find, find it fascinating. Well, I, I think it, it's important to recognize, you mentioned uh, about your anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. but for, for it's not a disorder for everybody. It is very much a spectrum. Oh, yeah. And people can, people, people can be, at any level on that spectrum and indeed every, everybody is on a different place on that spectrum so it can be uh, somebody who has mild anxiety about having a, a, a meeting that they're not they're not looking forward to to somebody who is actually so anxious that they find it very difficult to make decisions mm. 
Yeah, so it's it's um how I explain it to the people I work with is uh it's a it's a it's a big thing, it's a complex thing. And as we know, every single complex thing have pieces and the little things around. So you cannot you cannot really overcome or or just minimize it doing one thing. Um because as we've talked about impact on the body, uh, on the mind, overthinking, it's a huge, it's a huge topic. Uh, most of us, uh, we overthink stuff. So we dwell, or dwell on emotions or have a false future predictions. What will happen? Uh, I will embarrass myself in front of the colleagues from work. I'm not prepared. And all those thoughts about future that comes into your mind, into our mind, when we when we when we think about tomorrow's day, not being present, can create mild anxiety or a funny full blown panic attack, depending on a person. So that's that's definitely a point here. Uh, you you rightly say that anxiety is about worrying about the future. In mm -hmm. my experiences, those thought patterns. And those looping thoughts have their have their root in the past, and in my hypnotherapy work, that's what I that's what I try and elicit is the is where those thinking passions uh, thought began, and in finding where they began, where the root of the problem is, then we gain the awareness and can decide how we want to change our passions. What would you say in, with your clients? Where, where, where is the root of their of their thinking patterns? Um, so there is a lot of different angles we can we can talk about it. But let's say uh, quite often it's uh, traumatic experience from from childhood. Um, a lot of a lot of people also have an anxiety that they develop because of just stress daily stress because of work there was a brilliant study that, done by gallup uh about workplace and about people employees um and they've asked people do they like their work do they look with a smile for a, for a monday this type of questions i don't i don't want to quote it because i don't remember exactly but um nevertheless 13 percent of people say they hate their job they just hate it, hate it. And 60, 60 or 60 something, I don't remember, percent of people said uh, they just don't like it, but it's not like they hate it. But if they will change it, they wouldn't mind to change it. So overall, 70% around, roughly around 70% of people don't like or don't care about the job. So maybe not don't care, but are uh, like no show, maybe yes, maybe no. If you're in a position that you hate your job or you don't care about it, that means that 33% of your life, daily life from Monday to Friday, you've spend in a, you are spending in a place that only creates problem for you. And it's not hard to develop a habit of a thinking pattern, negative thinking pattern about next day or future or you don't see your future in the bright colors at all because you're stuck here. Monday is approaching. It's Friday evening and you're like, I need to go there on Monday. I hate my life. As of and, and of course, that feeling of being stuck oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is so common for so many people in jobs that they dislike. They feel that they're, they have a mortgage to pay. They have children to rear. They can't do anything about it. And and that's normal stuff. So as you know, we all had mortgages or we all have it or we have a car on finance and we need to pay. We need to bring some money home. We need food. We have kids. We have wife. You need to have some money around. So comfort zone wise, let's say you have a job for the last three years. It's the same job. Nobody really wants a lot of, from you. So you can just be there. And it's, it's the comfort zone kills the progress but on on the other hand it gives you that thought of stability but as as you you described the comfort zone 
and I described it as being stuck and the feeling that you can't change it. But what you can, of course, change is how you think about it. Oh, yeah. You, how you feel about how you think about it, how you feel about it. But in the end of the day, you can think about it and not take the, take the action. So we both know and uh, and how we work with our clients that we a little bit we are a little bit of a motivational speaker sometimes because it's some of us needs to have that additional push from outside just to that, that kick in a butt that will push us to get out of the comfort zone whatever it is i am not saying to change your job but sometimes it's like to take action to create something to get out of the of the of the loop of uh, negative thoughts that action needs to be taken without taking action nothing will change I'm just conscious that we're, we've been speaking now for almost half an hour and we haven't heard from any of the <laughs> attendees. That there's no pressure on anybody to, to comment, but I'd love to hear from somebody if anybody has a question or has a thought or even an insight that they, they'd be happy to share. Yeah, that would be brilliant if someone would um, uh, throw some questions or maybe you're in a position where you feel stuck and you want to make a first step. Or maybe you're in a position, you're a leader and some of your employees uh, have a problem and you don't know how to bite it. Perhaps you can you can leave a comment or, or say anything. So if, if people are shy, they are shy. It's no pressure. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, anyway, if they're talking about, they're talking about the ABC of, of anxiety, so... Mm -hmm. If the A is awareness, we've, we've spoken about that. So for in my world, the B of dealing with anxiety is breathing. So how can we use our breathing to help with our anxiety? Um, I think the, 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 the most, like the technique that works almost for everyone, like 95% of people is, to change the way you breathe for, for for even for five minutes. If you breathe using your belly and you breathe four, 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 which means inhale for four counts or four seconds, hold it for four seconds or four counts, exhale four, and then hold it again for four. Keeping your uh, keeping your hand on the belly, when you inhale, belly needs to go up, and when you exhale, needs to go down. When you hold, obviously, stay in the same position. Uh, that type of breathing was used by military, astronauts, and F1 drivers to calm themselves down. So it works. It was I don't know who developed it, but it was used in an army, so on, on, on a battlefield to calm your nerves. And it will work. I've seen a question in a, in a chat, did yeah, I? From Tim, so uh, you would like it to touch more on the nutrition mm -hmm. in in dealing with anxiety. So uh, absolutely, that's a such an important area. So I'd love to hear more more on that as well, Arthur. Yeah. So um, let's just describe it with a metaphor at first. It's like um, you need a fuel to run. So if if let's say your engine is a diesel and you will put a petrol into it, uh, maybe it will run for a second but not in the best way. It's not full potential. The same thing is with us. Uh, you are what you eat in a way. If you, if you put not the best fuel in your body, so we are talking about not nutrition, nutritious, dense food. Let's say all the processed foods, all the things that have only carbs in themselves, no, no, no minerals, no nutritional value, no vitamins. It, you will feel satisfied as such because you just had a, I don't know, pizza or a McDonald's, whatever it will be. Um, but it doesn't bring a lot of value into your body. So you cannot run without, especially with anxiety. So when, you, when you're anxious, your muscles are more tense. You're, a lot of times your heart beat, beat, beats faster. So you use a lot more of uh, minerals like uh, potassium and magnesium. So you will, you will get deficient really, really fast. So you need to eat diet rich in uh, especially those 
minerals and vitamins, vitamin Bs. Uh, there's there a lot of... particular diet that you recommend, uh, like the vegan diet or plant-based or... I wouldn't go and uh, I am I am not a big advocate of being like I don't eat meat or eat whatever you want really, but cut sugars, cut coffee. I am a I use modified keto diet with my clients a lot, which means we cut sugars for at least twenty one days to reset gut bacteria, and we uh, we put a lot of leafy greens green shakes, a lot of foods like avocado, which is uh, nutritious in omega-3, 6, and 9. It's a good ratio. Some nuts, people who doesn't eat meat, obviously, we, we use coconut oil, we use MCT oil, uh, avocado oil, nuts, seeds, chia seeds, a lot of things that will bring the, 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 the nutritional value. But we also... Uh, use eggs, fish for people who eat meat, beef, plus a lot of vegetables. So seven cups of leafy greens, let's say seven cups of spinach will bring 1,400 around, roughly around 1,400 milligrams of potassium, which will be your daily, uh, your daily need, especially when you're anxious. And also other, other minerals like, like magnesium, we just need to, the best way to do it is to track your uh, nutrition throughout the day, especially when, when you have a disorder or you're stressing a lot. So you can download whatever app you have on, on your iPhone or on Android and put the food you eat just to check. Don't change anything, just to check how much of vitamins and minerals you are getting. And it will show you on a chart how close or how far away from a daily daily value you are. So. Vitamin C is really easy to get because you will get it almost everywhere. Calcium, the same. You'll get it almost everywhere. But potassium, I had a question. I have questions about can I supplement potassium? Obviously, you can supplement whatever you want because you can buy it online. But if you want to get the daily value of potassium, you probably will need to have at least 10 tablets a day because they don't have a lot of milligrams of potassium in it. Uh, so there's just a, a couple of more questions coming in uh, there. One of them, uh, a beautiful question from from Anna. And just to, to summarize it, it's, uh, for some people, the, the diet becomes a source of the anxiety. So they become anxious about the diet uh so how would you how would you help a person dealing to, who has become anxious about the diet i wouldn't change my tactics at all really because it's um anxiety about something comes when you develop anxiety disorder so you can be anxious about it, everything that comes as we said anxiety is about future so you, you, you your diet will i feel okay or not eating meat will i collapse not eating meat or will the carnivore diet will be okay for me probably i will have gut cancer there is a lot of thoughts you can you can have and as an anxious, anxious person so the first thing i would do is reset gut bacteria so create environment in your body that you can absorb nutrients because if you have a problem issue with gut bacteria, you will not absorb nutrients as much as you need, as much as you should. So this is what I've said. Anxiety is a complex issue. It's, uh, uh, the part of it is spiritual. The part of it is um, mental as of thinking patterns and, and, and negative uh, reactions to your emotions. And some of it is body. It's like a little bit of a vicious circle because you can get antidepressants that will block your emotions, but they will not heal your trauma or they will not heal your gut, but, uh, your guts, or you, they will not bring a value of nutrition into your body. So I wouldn't change approach. I would still, I would still change the diet to the one that is healing your body instead of just putting something of calorie wise in it, uh, but I will definitely I would definitely focus also on uh, 
on, 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 a, on those complex different parts like spiritual way and emotional way i don't i don't know if uh if if or you've you, any awareness of the blue zones arthur and uh, basically the blue zones are areas of the world of, of planet earth where life expectancy and longevity are great are the greatest in the world so typically people live healthily into well into their 100 plus years uh, they live healthily and more most importantly anxiety free mm -hmm. but one of the the unique things that has been studied about those blue zones is their diets so anybody who's looking to find out more about how diets may benefit their health and their anxiety i'd recommend that they research and find out a bit more about the the blue zones mm -hmm. uh, i see another question in there from brian Mm -hmm. saying he has a 19-year-old daughter and he's convinced that her anxiety issues are related to all the time she spends on her phone. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably common with uh, parents. That's true. Uh, I, I've, I've opened the chat, so I see I didn't know I can open the chat, but now I see it. Is there any science or studies that back my theory? <laughs> I don't know if the study was done on a phone, definitely on social media and definitely on blue light. Uh, and uh, you can read about it. So sleep is a big factor of, of your brain resting as of the uh, rapid eye movement, at least period of your sleep and a deep sleep. And when you sit on your phone or like now we looking at a computer, we absorb a lot of blue light, which will prevent melatonin uh, your body to create melatonin, which is, which is which is a sleep hormone, and even if you will fall asleep, that doesn't mean your sleep will be deep, and it doesn't mean the sleep will be good. So people who spend a lot of time on their phones before going to bed, their sleep is really weak and shallow. So over over a period of time, the body will start to show some symptoms of, of it, it will just try to tell you stop it <laughs> but we are so disconnected from our from our awareness and from our bodies and from most of things because we are connected to everything else like phones social media tv games and anything else you can think of that we don't understand what our body try, is trying to say to us even with food even with nutrition even with spiritual things so yeah, I I, I can I can only show you I can only divert you to the study about melatonin and uh, social media impact on on uh, mental side of things. There are studies done on it, especially on Facebook. I think it was. Uh, I don't remember the name of the study, but if you type in in Google "social media versus um, mental health," you will find it. And blue light versus melatonin, you will also find it. So yeah, those two definitely. Yeah, and I agree with you, Brian. I agree. And I think that's the lesson I have to take to make sure my my five year old doesn't spend so much time on the phone. But sometimes, as parents, we become anxious about this. This is my this is my anxiety. We become anxious about educating our children, making sure they're they're they always seem to be active they always seem to be trying to they always they're either demanding attention for us or they're finding attention somewhere else and sometimes it can be easier to let them have the phone for an hour so we can get our we can look after our own mental health yeah and again it's a balance we don't have a tv in our house but obviously i have a laptop and sometimes netflix for children is on and I am also guilty of it, but at least I am trying to. Uh, I am trying. We are trying to minimize it. As of there is no TV, so it's not playing. If we and want this, something, this brings me to what I believe to be the C of the ABC of anxiety: A being mm -hmm. awareness, B being breathing, C is compassion, and compassion for ourselves, most importantly, 
that we don't get it right all the time. We can't get it right all the time. And that's okay. And knowing it's okay is is part of the battle, is a big part of the battle. Yeah, as I always repeat it to people I work with, that the first thing you need to realize, you are okay. Because you are okay. The things that happens into your, in, in your mind, this is anxiety talking, it's not you talking, so you are okay. You just need to deal with something, and that's fine. We all deal with things throughout the life. Um, and your compassion, accepting yourself, loving yourself. Um, I would recommend every single person to do exercise and look how uncomfortable you feel and don't judge it. Stand in front of the mirror. Look in your eyes, in your, your eyes. So you look at yourself and you look in your, into your eyes, deep into your eyes and say, I love you. And look how your body and, and your mind will react. This is what will tell you if you accept yourself. And I'll, show, I'll just uh, show you what I have on my screensaver on my phone. I don't know if you can see that, but basically says, I am enough. Oh, I am enough. On my yeah, phone that's... case on the other side of it, I have, I don't know if you can see that, but believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. It's a reminder to myself every time I pick up the phone that I am enough just as I am. And when I turn my phone around, I remind myself to believe that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that, that, that is beautiful because I, I I do think I don't know probably there is no study on it, but I do believe most of population have that negative belief. I am I'm not good enough, or people will judge me. It's uh, two most common I think beliefs, and th that comes from within, and that can be reversed, that can be healed, that can be. I know because I've done it. I've done it and I don't have it anymore. I used to be the most shy, not confident person that wouldn't jump on live video or talk to people or answer questions. And that's only because I had a belief. Absolutely. And when that belief, we can, we can use our, our beliefs for us or against us. Oh, yeah. And we choose we choose how to use our beliefs. And when we use, we use those beliefs for us, it, it frees us to be so much more powerful. Yeah, mind is so powerful that it can create anxiety. It can create feelings, bodily feelings and sensations like rapid, rapid heart beating, skipping heartbeats, uh, pain uh, in chests, pains in legs, pain everywhere, uh, brain fogs. So it can also be powerful enough to take it away and change it to something different, like feeling like uh, invincible and confident and attractive and all of those things. I'm just conscious, Arthur, that we're coming up now to uh, 10 to the hour. Uh, I'm saying the hour because I'm conscious uh, some people might be in different time zones. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's um, just... Um, if people want to hear more about what you do to help with anxiety, how can they contact you? What's the best way to get in touch with you? Ooh, mm, so probably if you type in Facebook my name and surname, just add me to friends. Uh, I have a group. It's private because not a lot of people want to talk publicly about the uh, struggle. So it's called Anxiety Breaker. If you if you type it in in, in a search and search groups in, in Facebook. You can apply to join and you will definitely be accepted. I accept everyone because I understand people need help. Um, yeah, I have my website, which is my name, surname.com, but it's it's more about, I, I, I'm transparent, so I don't lie. It's more of a sales page than anything else, uh, but there is a contact you can, you can click on yeah and send me a um, message anna, anna is asking there you are on linkedin too and it's okay to contact you through linkedin yeah definitely yeah 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 i am i'm i'm there i have it on my phone i don't use it enough and i i know i'm not good with it i need to do more but, but i am on linkedin yes okay and just to, to say that in my own case um i have a, a free community uh on my website, phosphorusnirvana.com. The community is completely free and it will give you access to previous webinars I've done, 
with people, previous interviews I've done with people, and uh, a little bit of insight into who I am and what I'm about. Um, so prosperousnavana.com, and there is an option on there to, to book a call with me if, if you think I can be of assistance. Um, yeah, I can, I can, I I can you interrupt you. Any, anything you'd like to say in, in, uh, in conclusion? <laughs> I want to. I want to just say that uh, um, I I'm one of a of a person who booked a call with William, and we had a we had a session. It was a beautiful session with with, with deep deep relaxation and work on emotions because I always work on myself, and I I, I really do think that personal development is is always the grow the growth the growing is always a need for a person. So I can only leave a testimonial here that working with William was a, was an excellent experience and a pure experience experience of uh, he, he was helping me even love myself and accept myself even better working with emotions I, I know you remember our session because it was an emotional session absolutely yeah and that's uh, I, don't, I don't believe you can change habits of action without changing habits of thought so I want to find out why you think the way you do so that's possibly not for everybody, but uh, people get most benefit out of the, out of going deep and doing the doing the hard work. It's uh, that's what I find benefits people most. Uh, Anna has another question there, Arthur. Uh, I don't know if you want to to answer that. Oh, do I charge for the first session? No, no. Discovery session, first sessions, I, I don't charge because first, it's two reasons. And I know William is doing, I think, the same. Correct me if I'm wrong. Absolutely right. Uh, you cannot really charge for the first session because first, we don't know each other. I don't know if I can help you. Maybe if I am not the perfect fit for you, I, I can at least show you a direction when you can go to get the help. And the second thing is, I don't know if you will trust me. And without trust... There is no growth. There is no change. So if I would charge for the first session, probably it will be really unfair.